Welcome to an exciting weekend of racing here from Los Angeles Race Course. Uh, we're going to preview here the weekend races. It is a weekend of champion champions and two million futurity. But pleased to be joined by Ed Bird. Ed, good to hear your voice. And again, on top of the great uh, nighttime cards, we also have the daytime doubleheaders. Yeah, it's a great night of racing coming up here on Saturday. Obviously, the champion at champions the race. I actually called 38, not 39 times. I forgot that we didn't run it in 2014. So yes. I, I was one off there. But we've got the champion of champions, which is the premier quarter horse race for older horses in the country and probably the best champion of champions I can recall. Earlier in the day, during the daytime thoroughbred, we have the grade one starlet with a purse of $300,000 for the two-year-old fillies. And Bob Baffert's got three of the seven entrants. And we're offering a special stakes daily double from the starlet to the champion of champions. So it looks like there might be ways to make money and involving some of the thoroughbred people during the daytime with our quarter horse card at night and getting them introduced to quarter horse racing. It's going to be a fun double to kind of get involved in and get a wager on. So that's, uh, again, a day, daytime, nighttime, daily double offer by Los Alamitos, tying up the great one starlet during the daytime and the champion of champions at night. And uh, both races are the last races on each uh, each program, right, Ed? Yeah, both races are the final race, the ninth race during the daytime, the eighth race at night. And, of course, I also do the morning line during the daytime as well as the nighttime. So I have uh, Bob Baffert as a 7-5 to five favorite on FaZa, who is so impressive in the maiden victory about a month ago, Flavian Pratt's coming over to ride. And I had a really difficult time in the champion and champions coming up with a morning line favorite. I landed on apolitical pence, but the more I look at it, impressing a very well go favorite just because impressions in the number 10 post. I do think one of those two will go favorite. Bomb Cyclone and Danger are also going to get well supported and Danger, the defending world champion. Yeah, so let's. Uh, I'll bring up the PPs for the BM public. The champion of champions, as we all saw, was drawn live on FanDuel TV. Shout out, great job to Mike Corona and uh, Dave Weaver for doing a tremendous job with that live draw. And uh, quickly through the field, we see Bomb Cycling on the rail, Danger in post number two. Let's talk about those two first, Ed. Uh, what kind of made you kind of make, lay them, lay both of them at three to one here? Well, Bomb Cyclone's going to take a lot of money uh, based on the fastest 400 yard clocking of the season. He's practically unbeatable from the rail post but he's never faced older horses but i know he's going to take a lot of support from the betters of course dangerous last year's quarter horse world champion he's on a winning streak facing much much tougher here so i don't think he'll get the support here that he did back at uh, indianapolis or back in albuquerque because the competition in those races is not nearly as strong but both of those are major major contenders uh, do you have any insight on why james flores ended up on danger we saw cody smith come out to work danger uh did you hear anything about the connections you know, I don't know all the details, what exactly transpired in Oklahoma, but I do know that James Flores picked up the mount, so not really at liberty to say all the details behind the Cody Smith situation. But you're right, Cody did work the horse, but James Flores, who's been a multiple AQHA riding champion, mm -hmm. will be aboard danger for the first time. Yeah, not not a, not a bad way to team up. James Flores, a, a very top rider. Cato Co., who was part of your last two million futurity call back in, what was it, 2019? Yeah, 2019, uh, Cattail Cove was in the futurity with the cartel just rocking. It was a great yes. finish down to the wire. Uh, Nomadic was in the race, and Cattail Cove has been very, very consistent. I think he's a notch below these, but definitely worthy of being in the champion of champions. Just a political girl, the Texas bred here for Valentin's and Widio, and Sergio Castillo. She's a previous winner at 400 yards. A powerful favorite. Uh, this is going to be his last race, right, Ed? Right, powerful favorites, a full brother, too, Bomb Cyclone, of course, and from that great family out of the tremendous uh, race mare, but powerful favorite. Who would have ever thought I would have laid him 15 to 1 in a race? Yes. Like that, but that tells you how tough the competition is. Powerful favorite won his Z Wayne Griffin director's trial, but in considerably slower time than Apolitical Pence did. So I think the others are going to have to make major mistakes for a powerful favorite to win. Now we get to Apolitical Pence, 2 to 1 there on the morning. And Ed, I, in, my, in the comments that I do for the night lines, uh, I wrote down that. He's looking for a search straight, obviously, but he might be coming in sharper than his previous two wins. Would you agree with that statement? He's probably better now than he's ever been. Yeah. But he's going to have to be that to win this race. Uh, he's a rocket ship from the gate, and he finishes really strong. His win back in the Los Al Championship, I was fortunate to be down there to fill in for Michael Rona that week. and was eye-catching. And uh, definitely post position number six is what Monte Rosa had. That's the same post that he broke from in the last two champion to champions wins. There we get to a political candy V, the win of the All American Derby. He has not broken at all, but that second place finish to qualify to the Super Derby was much better than looked. I went back to look at the All American Derby ad, and to me, he was so impressive in that win that I still we I still think we haven't seen the best of him here in Los Angeles. No, I think he's got a big shot in here if he can break. The problem is he's drawn next to eight political pins. He's a rocket ship out of the gate. Yes. So 
he might be a length and a half or two lengths behind early. A political candy V would be rain. There's a chance of getting some rain Saturday night, more rain Sunday morning, but that's probably would be the best chance for him to win. Patty Saint, a good resume, 13 for 19. She's going to have the gate speed, but this is going to be about as tough of a, of a test that she's ever had. Sweet Dash of Fire, 50 to 1. This one, winner of the PC QHRA. There's a full sister to He's Dash of Fire who won it in 2015. Yeah, and a uh, full sister to He's a Dash of Fire, and also the horse that won the uh, Los Al 2 million the same way out of the same mare. But I think she's up against it here. I respect the connections, but. Uh, I know Jose Flores won with Mr. PYC to you. I think yes. uh -huh. anything can happen in a horse race. For sure. And now we get to the outside post and press them. Um, and you got to think they'd love where they were able to choose the outside post because we all saw how he did when he had the outside in the vessel's maturity. He was awesome. He came back at odds at two to five against eight political pins last time out. Ran a good race, but eight political pins had the seven hole and press them had the two. And eight political pins just got the jump early. But I, now that Impressum draws the outside, he's my pick to win this race just because of the post position draw. I'm kind of regretting now I didn't make him two to one and eight political pins five to two. <laughs> I, think, I think the money is going to go to Impressum uh, because of the outside post. And uh, now tell me a little bit about the, the, the post position draw. Did you already have uh, the entire morning line kind of mapped out or did, did kind of the draw affect maybe one or two lines that you were kind of debating on? The draw affected one or two lines. I pretty much had it mapped out. I figured whoever drew 10th was going to be at a disadvantage. So Danger's odds went from 5-2 to two up to 3-1 to one because he got okay. the worst of the post, in my opinion. Bomb Cyclone, I figured when Chris O'Dell's going to have one of the early picks, he would take the rail. And the other two were picked. Uh, I saw the selection order early enough to think they were both going to get good post A political yeah. pens to impress them. So, I, I, like I said, I went back and forth between A political pens and impress them to make the favorite. But a political fence is where I ended up at two to one. All right. Uh, can't wait. It's going to be a fun, fun renewal there. The 50th edition of the Champion of Champions, $750,000 there on Saturday night. You can catch all the action live on FanDuel TV. And uh, for people that don't know, Ed, you're going to join us on set. It will be yourself, Dave Weaver, and myself on the set. And also Caleb, uh, Caleb Keller will be part of the broadcast. Looking forward to it because I keep adding your age and Caleb Keller's age together. <laughs> They don't match my age, so how's that? So you got the old man versus uh, the youngsters down there, and we'll put Dave Weaver somewhere in the middle. How's that? Yeah, yeah, that's good. We'll we'll, we'll toss Dave around. He'll he'll be part of the show, but no, uh, it'll be fun to work alongside for the big big night, and uh, can't wait there. So join us. It'll be Ed, myself, Caleb Keller, Dave Weaver, part of the FanDuel broadcast, bringing you live coverage from Los Avinos Racecourse. Before we let you go, we talked about that double. I do have the PPs here handy for the Starlet. Why don't we briefly mention some of the contenders in that race? Well, the horse to beat, in my opinion, is a horse that only broke the maiden face the first time out. Watch the videotape on her maiden victory. She's four to five. I think the connections paid uh, seven hundred and twenty-five thousand yeah. dollars at the yearling sale. She came back with a terrific workout, according to the reports I got on December the second, and I definitely think she's the horse to beat. But she hasn't gone two turns yet, and all, with only one start under her belt, she might be at a disadvantage against doing it the hard way. He's coming off a strong second in the fastest of four mile race that day at Del Mar uncontrollable, who was second in a very weak chandelier stakes. You've got Pride of the Nile, who's won two consecutive turf races, mm -hmm. now switching to the dirt. And Blessed Touched on the outside, who was second against the very well-regarded Justique last time out, trying two turns for the first time as well. So I think I covered the five main contenders out of the seven horses. Yeah, it's an intriguing group. Uh, of course, Bob Baffert, well-represented here. And uh, we got well-represented with top riders. We've got Ramon Vasquez, Flavian Pratt, Mike Smith, Cedillo, Hernandez, Van Dyke. It's a very good feel that I think the, the form of uh, of uh, Faisa is flattered at it because Lily Pooh was a runner that I liked coming off of that one. She came back to win at Delmar, I want to say, last week here and won very nicely. Yeah, she sure did, but that was against maidens, not against winners. Yeah. So the one thing about Faisa going from a six furlong race to a mile and a 16th, just second time out, I mean, I think she's the best horse, but my opinion is she'll get over bet. You've got Flavian Pratt, you got Bob Baffert. I laid him seven to five. You might go even money. So you mm -hmm. might look for other horses to use in that daily double. Doing it the hard way, I think, is the other baffer that you have to contend with. And uncontrollable from off the pace could be a threat as well. Again, the Starlet, grade one event, Amana 16th, uh, uh, going here at Los Amidos. And you can play the, the daytime, nighttime double, combining the Starlet and the champion champions on Saturday at Los Alamitos. Ed, it was good to hear you. Good to see your voice, uh, hear your voice. And uh, looking forward to working uh, together on set uh, this upcoming Saturday. 
and congratulations to you for the uh, third part of your pick four. I don't want to put yes. pressure on you. you got yeah, the, um, was it a girl or a boy? It's a boy. We got a boy. So we had two girls, a little boy, Abraham. We named him Abraham. Abraham arrived on Sunday. So he's he's doing great. Mama and baby are doing great. So uh, we have a happy household right now. That's great. I'm looking forward to working with you. All right. Ed, thank you for joining us. I'll see you this Saturday. All right. Thanks. And the way they go. This December, Quarter Horse Racing's most prestigious race will have one of the greatest fields ever. The 50th running of the Champion of Champions. A race for the ages. World Champion Danger. Two-time Champion of Champions winner, Apolitical Pence. Champion Impressum. Full Brothers Bomb Cyclone and Powerful Favorite. Plus five other stars, all in one race. Who will be the Champion of Champions? The Southern California Thoroughbred Racing Circuit returns to Los Alamitos this December with our winter thoroughbred meet. Opening day is set for Friday, December 9th. Young stars will be in action with four stakes races for juveniles highlighting the meet. The Grade 1 Starlet for Phillies is set for Saturday, December 10th. The Los Alamitos Futurity will be held on Saturday, December 17th. And don't miss our NHC qualifier. Opening day is Friday, December 9th. For more, visit LosAlamitos.com. The best of nighttime racing continues at Los Alamitos with the Southern California Derby on Sunday, December 18th. Top qualifiers, Stuck in Probate leads the way, plus Dasha Dynasty, Boone Darbian, Conant Valley, and six others. And after Christmas break, Los Alamitos is back on Saturday, December 31st. Ring in the new year with a special holiday weekend of racing, Saturday, December 31st, Sunday, January 1st. And remember the Southern California Derby, the best of quarter horse racing, always at Los Alamitos. That's right. Who will be the champion of champions? The AQHA World Championship appears like it's going to be settled on the racetrack because we have a tremendous, tremendous field here assembled for this year's edition of the champion of champions. Now joined by Mike Corona. Michael, good to hear you and uh, good to see you on the FanDuel TV uh, preview show, excuse me, draw show. You and Ed Weaver, uh, Dave Weaver, excuse me, did a great, great job. Oh, thanks so much, Jose. Yeah, it was a lot of fun being involved with that. Up at the podium as the drama unfolded. And how about this post-position draw for the champion of champions? You consider the three big names have already stamped themselves as elite performers at Los Alamitos. Bomb Cyclone had the rail winning both the two million yes. futurity and the super derby. So here he is out of gate one again. You've got a political pence drawn six. He had the black saddle cloth for his two victories, although actually he broke from post position five last year after a yeah. scratch. But still, mm. that's uh, that's fortuitous for him, potentially. And Impressum had gate 10 when he overwhelmed the opposition in the vessel's maturity. It's extraordinary that they're going to break from quite possibly the preferred post positions for each set of connections. The danger, of course, has never run at Los Alamitos. And he's the big query in gate number two. You would think that he fared the worst of it, uh, being the last to choose when there really wasn't a choice to be made. Yeah, it's 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 a tremendous uh, field assembled without a, without a doubt here for this year's renewal of the Champion of Champions. And I was following your travels via Twitter, and you were out at University of Arizona, the racetrack industry program at the symposium. I was a student there at the racetrack industry program a oh, few great. years ago. Uh, it was good to hear you out there and see a few of those pictures there. How, how was the symposium? Oh, it was excellent. The last six years or so, I've been emceeing the Tuesday Awards Luncheon for the Turf Publicists of America and the Racetrack Industry Program. And it includes the Big Sport of Turfdom Award, which this yeah. year they gave to Cody Dorman. That heartwarming story you might have seen on the NBC telecast of Breeders' mm -hmm. Cup Day when Cody's wish won the Breeders' Cup Mile. And Cody made his first ever plane trip with his family to accept the award. Uh, he made a speech uh, from the stage. It was very moving and uh, an extremely worthwhile, memorable experience for me to be there. That's great. That's great. And uh, a big salute to everybody out there at the symposium, at the racing symposium at the University of Arizona uh, this week. From right, the race here. calling standpoint, just to, for one more uh, second on yes. Tucson, uh, there just happened to be this year uh, a race callers panel yes. mm -hmm. uh, convened, including Dave Johnson and Tom Durkett. It was mm -hmm. moderated by Pete Aiello from Gulfstream. And there were several other race callers in the audience, yours truly included. We uh, we adjourned to the uh, the lobby, the bar lobby, <laughs> for uh, for a few 
glasses of wine afterwards. And uh, it was just so wonderful catching up with those legends of the craft. Yeah, it was it was a fun photo you guys shared there on Twitter. So a big salute to everybody out there uh, having a good time and sharing uh, insights and trying to learn from each other at the racing uh, symposium at uh, the University of Arizona, the racetrack industry program. Um, so a big salute to that. All right, back to Los Alamitos. Also, one story you shared uh, during the FanDuel draw show was that a racing, racing secretary told you, I'm kind of jealous that you guys were able to draw that big <laughs> of a field, right? Yeah. Yeah, he told me point blank. He said, I wanted so desperately to get a few <laughs> of these horses together, uh, specifically Danger and Apolitical Pence, and he could not make it happen. And uh, he's so he's uh, professionally um, envious, shall we say. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's good to hear that lots of people also from far and wide are looking forward to this race as much as we are. All right. Let's talk about a horse to watch uh, on your watch here. Race number four, the start of the closing leg of the early pick four on Saturday night. And you're looking towards the horse on the outside in this uh, maiden event. And that is intuition. Yes. Uh, this is a race for two-year-old fillies, Jose. And Intuition debuted back on the 7th of May in a 220-yard race when breaking poorly and uh, just after the start, in fact, in the field of nine, if you look at the drone shot, she was actually eighth out of post position number two. Things have gone quite terribly wrong for her since. And I'm just wondering if there's a chance of her springing a surprise here at Big Odds on Saturday night. But take a look at this race from gate two on May 7th. She was, what, 14 to 1 in his field of 9. There was a scratch here. Uh, so she didn't take much betting support, but it wasn't that bad of an effort, all things considered. Yeah, she was a long way back after that early inconvenience. She was second last a few strides after the race, but she comes through strongly, one off the rail to finish third and keep it rolling, mate, through the gallop out. This is what caught my eye. The horse streaks clear of the field midway around the clubhouse turn. It was a really strong, impressive gallop out. And it made me think that this would be a horse to follow. Now, in her second start, she was put into a trial to the Ed Burke Million Futurity and went off as one of the top fancies, about five to two, yeah. but it went wrong for her there. In fact, the jockey lost his irons after intuition broke very awkwardly on that occasion. Um, three weeks later, they tried a flipping holder, but she disappointed from the rail and she went to the bench. She, she had four months off. She returned three weeks ago with no blinkers or flipping holder. They'd been doing all sorts of experimenting with the equipment and she cost herself with uh, acting up badly in the gate. She really lost all chance before the starter opened the doors. I've got a feeling she actually might have been a late gate scratch through playing up in the gate on some other recent occasion. So, look, there's no question that she does not have all of her marbles together upstairs. She's obviously a head case, and that becomes, obviously, a risk factor. But the risk-reward ratio to me, makes sense at eight to one because she gets to the outside post position. Her four starts have either been from gate two or gate one. If she walks into the gate last and the starter can get them away quickly, she might not even have time to think about acting up and being silly in the gate. And with room to stretch her legs down the outside, I just think she could get involved at good odds. At, at eight to one, longer shot on the board. I'm willing to try my hand here. Uh, it's um, And I'll tell you one other angle that I cannot help but notice and love. Intuition is a full sister to Cattail Cove. Mm -hmm, it will line up yes. later in the Champion of Champions. And so maybe this will be the night where she really feels like she ought to do her big brother proud. Mate, uh, we didn't share notes, but I can tell you that this was going to be my main upsetter to the four. In the nine ah. lines, I went four six. Four six were my selections oh. for this race. So I I thought intuition deserved a strong look, not only because of everything you said, but she finally gets off the inside two posts. And maybe getting loaded towards the latter half of the field, maybe even last, we'll see how they load her. I thought she had an opportunity to break much better than what she's done up to this point. Whether she's good enough to win, I am in agreement with you about intuition in this spot. Well, they paid almost a hundred grand for her as a yearling. So obviously there's been things to like, some aspects of quality to her right from the beginning. And if she can get back to what she displayed 
on debut with some mm-hmm. even luck and hopefully very minimal time in the gate, then maybe we're smiling at the good odds. It should be a good one. Extrovert is like the expected favorite. This was a, a runner we also liked uh, way back in those uh, early morning works. Ended up finishing second in the Tempo Court. They were the the first two, uh, excuse me, they were the only two first time starters in that field back in August. And then since then, Extrovert finished third most recently back on November 12th. But I am liking your analysis of intuition. It's a horse that I think has a good shot as well here. I do think without a doubt, the four is a horse to beat. But with that price, with the outside draw, I think the price is right to take a shot with intuition. Yep, Cattail Cove will be watching back in his uh, barn. He'll uh, he'll have the TV on and uh, and take yeah. in that race while he's uh, going through his uh, mental warm up exercises for the champion of champions. <laughs> he's gonna be coaching. He's gonna be coaching his sister. Sister, do yeah. this, do this, yeah. do this, and you maybe are uh, able to take a picture tonight. So <laughs> intuition, Michael. I like that analysis. While I have you here for a moment, why don't we briefly talk about the champion of champions, a featured event? Uh, are you starting to get the butterflies, mate? Oh, they've been uh, fluttering about for a while. uh, It's hard to get the race out of your mind, actually. It's been a long build-up. And, um, you know, just from the standpoint of the spectacle as a fan, I'm sure everybody's been holding their breath, just hoping that no one stubs a toe, so to speak. But seemingly everything is going perfectly in preparation for this, for all of these wonderful horses to be clashing in this season-ending championship race. Is, it's extraordinary. And the fact it's the 50th running, we've got the elevated purse to three quarters of a million dollars. I love the fact that Ed Burgart's going to be on the premises, uh, yes. helping out on the FanDuel TV set. So appropriate that Ed is here amongst the action. And uh, I'm just um, humbled, really, to have the chance to be in the booth behind the binoculars for this race. All right, now I that I just... do... Sorry, I was just going to say, I hope I can do it justice. <laughs> you will. You will. Trust me. Uh, now that the dust have settled, the morning line is out, the post have have been drawn. Who are you leaning to here in the champion champions? Who are you liking? My selection is impressive. Okay. Uh, that vessel's maturity win from the outside post stands him in very good stead. And obviously, Bomb Cyclone uh, has been absolutely sensational from the rail but you know he is a three-year-old yeah uh, he, he's trying to do what no horse has ever done before win the two million futurity super derby and champion of champions it's it's well within his scope mm-hmm. if any of these big four win i'm not going to be surprised but if i have to put my neck out and pick one it's impress him down the extreme outside the draw is is ideal i think for him without a doubt he's gonna have he should have the opportunity to run his race and if he runs his race uh, he might be able to run away with this race. I ended up picking Bomb Cyclone on top. I did uh-huh. go one. I did go one ten. So I went Bomb Cyclone over over Impressum, and then April of Compens in third. Uh, Danger to me. The lack of ex- local experience to me kind of downgraded him just a little bit. I upgraded the horses with local experience, but I mean, any one of those big names should be uh, very very tough to beat. But if I had to make a selection. I would go with Bomb Cyclone on the road just because he seems to love that inside post. And yep. Adorno Nicasio, Adorno Nicasio writes him perfectly when he's drawn anywhere in the gate, but most notably he's he's had signature wins from that inside post. So I can't wait. It's going to be a tremendous renewal of the champion champions. And I want to I want to I want to talk to you about how about that fake that Christopher Odell did in the draw show? Wasn't that a good <laughs> fake? That was pretty well executed. <laughs> yes. Hey, he yes. had me for a second. Yes, he went. Uh, what did he go to post? Was it eight or nine? And then he, he I, faked it and he, he went to the rail. They had taken 10, nine, and eight in that order, and he was okay. the fourth to pick. So he uh, he actually made as if he was going to hang the horse's name next to post position number seven. And you probably didn't hear it on the telecast, but as I was talking as he was coming up to the stage, I was uh, mentioning bomb cyclone potentially being the one to break this pattern in the post position order and yeah. how great the horse has been from the rail and uh, christopher sort of said half under his breath is it that transparent and so then he went up and pulled this fake so that was i just thought it was brilliant i love it, it. Was, it was it was we've had some of those fakes before in years past in the, in the champion champion two million dollars so i'm glad christopher odell uh continued that tradition of uh, throwing in a fake here he almost he almost had us because he he made a pause. He like yeah. made a pause yeah. like he was hanging it, and then he <laughs> went up. So he he kind of he he had me. He had me for a, a millisecond. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It was uh, it was well played. 
It was full, full marks to him. Yes. Uh, so good to hear you, and uh, it's going to be exciting to hear you uh, uh, your calls throughout the weekend. And of course, we'll have the daytime double headers as well. And a reminder: Los Alamitos will have a day night double. Connecting the Starlet on Saturday, which is the last race, the Grade One event, last race on Saturday daytime. Connecting to the Grade One Champion Champions last race on nighttime. So, a day night double there for Los Alamitos. I love that innovation. A Grade One double day night, brilliant. All right, Michael, uh, rest up. You're going to need to be in tip top shape for these uh, tremendous cards. Can't wait to see you out there this weekend. Good on you, mate. Hooray! And the way they go. This December, Quarter Horse Racing's most prestigious race will have one of the greatest fields ever. The 50th running of the Champion of Champions, a race for the ages. World Champion Danger. Two-time Champion of Champions winner, Apolitical Pence. Champion Impressive. Full Brothers Bomb Cyclone and Powerful Favorite, plus five other stars, all in one race. Who will be the Champion of Champions? The Southern California Thoroughbred Racing Circuit returns to Los Alamitos this December with our winter thoroughbred meet. Opening day is set for Friday, December 9th. Young stars will be in action with four stakes races for juveniles highlighting the meet. The Grade 1 Starlet for Phillies is set for Saturday, December 10th. The Los Alamitos Futurity will be held on Saturday, December 17th. And don't miss our NHC qualifier. Opening day is Friday, December 9th. For more, visit LosAlamitos.com. The best of nighttime racing continues at Los Alamitos with the Southern California Derby on Sunday, December 18th. Top qualifiers, Stuck in Probate leads the way, plus Dasha Dynasty, Boone Darbian, Conant Valley, and six others. And after Christmas break, Los Alamitos is back on Saturday, December 31st. Ring in the new year with a special holiday weekend of racing, Saturday, December 31st, Sunday, January 1st. And remember the Southern California Derby, the best of quarter horse racing, always at Los Alamitos. That's right. A tremendous field assembled for the champion champions. Chris, we'll talk about that big event uh, in a moment. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, we want to talk about race number five. You got a selection you like here in this spot. I thought there was a number of runners that could win this race, including the two horse that you like here at BF Bonafide. Yeah, this horse has um, steadily improved on my numbers in all of the starts. This horse was a C-plus worker prior to his debut, but he's had some trouble in a couple of races, including the last effort, but he's got a lot of talent. And on my numbers, he's got a big look here in the outcome here at that three to one in the morning line there by Ed Burgard. It's a tough race. I just could see three or four horses in this race actually winning. So it's, yes. a, it's a very good event. It is a very good race. And uh, he is listed at three to one on Ed Burgard's morning line. Also, he's listed as a first time gilding in the nine links, Chris. So this might be something where we could even upgrade him off of that. But let's take a look at this replay that you liked on November 20th. Uh, we knew he Chicklets was the horse to beat in this trials because he's very, very quick out of the gate. But what do you think about Bia Bonafide here who had the inside post? Yeah, he was drawn right up against he's Chicklets there and he didn't get a, got a little fractious in the gate and broke a kind of back bobbled away from the barrier loss over a length away from the gate. But he's a nice size runner up before the big run midway. And uh, he was finishing very, very strong in the final half of the affair. So and he galloped out very strong. He likes uh, this distance and he's got a big look at the outcome with a clean getaway here tonight. Well, my number's got see, a big chance. He, the, you can see he's chickless striding away there down the outside part of the drag gate seven. But BF Bonafide ran very well given the start. It wasn't the fast start at all, the way he galloped out. I mean, he's he's already shown us that he's a good horse by winning his first two starts, right? Yeah, he's, he's got a lot of talent and uh, a little bit trouble prone. But uh, if he gets away clean, you can see from the inside post here, and that last effort didn't get away very well, but before the run, big, big run midway, and he finished very strongly. Versus the aforementioned, he's chickless, and he galloped out very, very strong. So he's got a lot of talent. If he gets away clean, he's got a big look at the outcome there in the fifth race. But there's a couple others in there that have big chances as well, depending on the way they get away. Yeah, remember her is on the rail, 7-2. She's uh, she's 2 for 5 to begin her career. She's only missed the board once in a troubled start. We see Chiquititas Cartel, Mamba Cartel, Space Flight, which he's, he hasn't had – all good, good starts at all in the last two. He was impressive winning that California Breeders' Freshman Stakes back on July. And then Marcelo, I thought this horse showed much improvement last time out as a first-time gelding. What did you think? Yeah, he improved He improved immensely, like about, about a length of my charts in the last effort. He uh, broke a little bit slow, but he put forth a big run away and he made a stronger stride near the wire 
and he galloped out very, very strong. So he's also got a big look at the 350-yard distance with a clean getaway expected from that nice outside pose drop against your space flight, who's a little bit trouble prone, but like he was last time, but he's got lots of talent. If he gets away clean, he's got to look at the outcome there as well in that uh, fifth event. This is a this is a nice race to start the late pick four. It's competitive. Uh, I think there's a number of ways to go. I think there's not going to be a clear cut favorite. So uh, let's see if BF Water Five can get the score for you here as your selection in race number five. While we have you for a moment, let's talk, uh, briefly talk about the big race. First of all, what do you think about the draw, and which horse do you think uh, drew best in this champion of champions? Well, you have to. It's it, it's it is a stellar field. I've been uh, here quite some time. I've never seen a field this loaded. It is an incredible field. The fiftieth running of champion of champions, and all my numbers. A uh, bomb cyclone loves that inside post. He's very very sharp. He's a fast qualifier. He likes that inside box. He's won well from the loss at the loss on middle so oval before from that inside post, and uh, he has got my best number. But you know. Anything can happen in a race like this. We got four or five horses that figure very, very close on the out uh, in that affair. But I'm gonna give Bombs like on a slight edge up against uh, older brother and uh, full, full sibling, a powerful favorite, and a couple others, including Impressum and Apolitical Pence, who uh, has won this last event. Let this event last two years. So it is a stellar group of horses, and uh, I just can't wait. Yeah, it's going to be a fun race. Uh, like you mentioned, a lot of a stellar a number of horses impress him through the outside post. We saw how he how impressive he was winning the vessels maturity from the outside post. Uh, but I'm giving a slight lean towards Mom Cyclone as well. I'm kind of with you, even though he's a three year old facing older. Uh, he has that body. He has that kick. He likes the inside post. His numbers are strong. Everything points towards a big race as well from Bomb Cyclone, but uh, everybody is going to have to run their perfect race, right, Chris? There's no room for error at all in a race like this. No mistakes in this field. It's a closely matched affair, and they're all champions, and uh, it is going to be a great affair. I just can't wait for Saturday evening there in eighth race. It is going to be fun. All right, Chris, thanks for joining us this week. Good to hear you, and uh, best of luck with Be a Bonafide. Looking forward to uh, that tremendous card. And, of course, we'll wrap it up with the champion of champions. And, uh, uh, you know, best of luck to all the connections and the big race, Chris. And uh, I'll see you out there this weekend for sure. All right, boss. We'll see you. I'll try to get that uh, VF Bonafide home up against uh, your space flight. And of course, Marcello in there in the fifth race. We're going to go head to head. I like space flight. You know I can't. You know when you pick a horse and then they have trouble and then you jump off and they win? I can't let that happen with space flight. You so. cannot let that happen. It happens too many times in this yes. game. So, but just by principle alone, I have to back it one more time. So I can ju jump off a splice fight. So we'll go a little bit of head to head. Be a bona fide versus splice fight. Uh, we'll do a little side wager and have some fun. So Chris, just, thank you for hey, let's just hope they both break and when best horse wins. You know what's good? That we're separated from each other. We can't bump each other because that might happen. <laughs> but we're separated from each other, so we can't eliminate each other, Chris. So let's hope for a clean start and may the best horse win. Best horse win, All right, boss? You have a good night. I'll see you out there. You too. Have a good night. This December, Quarter Horse Racing's most prestigious race will have one of the greatest fields ever. The 50th running of the Champion of Champions, a race for the ages. World Champion Danger. Two-time Champion of Champions winner, A Political Pence. Champion Impressive. Full Brothers Bomb Cyclone and Powerful Favorite, plus five other stars, all in one race. Who will be the Champion of Champions? The Southern California Thoroughbred Racing Circuit returns to Los Alamitos this December with our winter thoroughbred meet. Opening day is set for Friday, December 9th. Young stars will be in action with four stakes races for juveniles highlighting the meet. The Grade 1 Starlet for Phillies is set for Saturday, December 10th. The Los Alamitos Futurity will be held on Saturday, December 17th. And don't miss our NHC qualifier. Opening day is Friday, December 9th. For more, visit LosAlamitos.com. The best of nighttime racing continues at Los Alamitos with the Southern California Derby on Sunday, December 18th. Top qualifiers, Stuck in Probate leads the way, plus Dasha Dynasty, Boone Darbian, Conant Valley, and six others. And after Christmas break, Los Alamitos is back on Saturday, December 31st. Ring in the new year with a special holiday weekend of racing, Saturday, December 31st, Sunday, January 1st. And remember the Southern California Derby, the best of quarter horse racing, always at Los Alamitos. We have a ride to the big weekend, Professor G. Welcome back to the program here for this uh, weekend of Champion of Champions and Los Hatsum Minute Futurity. 
How are you doing here uh, this upcoming week? I'm doing well, Jose. And of course, I have to congratulate you on the birth of uh, your young boy. Congratulations to you and Karina as well. Great addition to the quarter horse racing family and to the family of Los Alamitos, Jose. And of course, we got the big weekend of racing here at Los Alamitos with the champion of champions on Saturday and the Los Alamitos 2 million futurity on Sunday. And as you well know, we've talk been talking about it, the draw that took place earlier this week. And uh, what a great group of runners. We had a chance to talk to a lot of the uh, main participants in this big uh, weekend of action. And we'll be going through the uh, interviews there, Jose. But again, looking forward to what should be just a tremendous way to close out the uh, the year here at Los Al. And as you, may, as you also well know, uh, we have our thoroughbred meet kicking mm -hmm. off this Friday uh, with our first of six days of action. Uh, and of course, we got the great one started this weekend. And the Los Alamitos Futurity next week, and we have a couple of other juvenile races that will take place on Sundays. The Soviet problem this Sunday, the King Glorious next Sunday. Yeah, it's going to be jam packed here for the next couple of weekends with the, uh, day and night double headers. And also speaking of day night double headers, Professor, we have a day night double daily double offering this Saturday at Los Alamitos that will begin with the Starlet, which is the last race on the daytime card, uh, concluding with the Champion of Champions, the last race on the nighttime card. Yeah, it's a one dollar double, and like you mentioned, the starter will be the leg A, the first, the first uh, opening uh, race of the double, uh, race number nine on on Saturday, and the champion of champions race number eight. Uh, so you can play that double. It will be a bit available as a separate card. So when you go to the self ser service terminal, just okay. look for the starlet uh, for the track. Click on the track, and you'll see the starlet. Uh, champion of champions double that's kind of, that's what it's titled and then you okay. can just play it uh, leg one will be the uh, starlet uh leg two will be the champion of champions all right looking forward to that action and that way you're being offered here at los Lomitos. let's get down to business professor i was a late scratch from the draw show uh by the way thank you uh from my wife and our our family here uh yeah uh Abraham, Abraham Jose Contreras, that is his name. He arrived on a Sunday morning. He wanted to be here for the big champion of champions weekend. I was telling him, Professor, I was like, come on out. We need you here for champion of champions. So he made his arrival, Professor, uh, on time. And uh, baby and mama are doing well. So uh, uh, thank you for those sentiments. Uh, and everybody checked out. So I missed out on, on the draw show, Professor. You were there. You were, uh, you know, you were able to talk with a lot of connections. And uh, how did it go? What was your impressions here of, of the draw? Well, we have talked about last week about what, you know, some of the connections may wish for. Yes. Uh, early Christmas wish, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what they might get on the draw. And a lot of them got exactly what they wanted. Uh, Bomb Cyclone, uh, we knew kind of like the connections would love to see him in post number one. And uh, as he was walking up, Chris Odell, as he was walking up to uh, kind of hang it, he kind of said under his breath, Am I that transparent? You know, are we that <laughs> transparent that, uh, you know, everybody knows we're going to get the one? And uh, you'll see, we, we actually have a video of his interview there. And uh, he kind of gives us a little fake. Like he's gonna he did, like, you saw you the know. fake out? That was a great fake out. He had me for half a second. He had me for half a second, per se. Yeah, of course. But no, he went to the right, you know, the post that we figured he, he would go. Uh, he went to the number one post. Uh, and of course, he's judge and jury and the two million side. Uh, he won the All-American Futurity from post number six. He's able to get that post uh, in the two million. Uh, impress him. Uh, we figure that he might like an outside post. He's going to yeah. get from the far outside post number 10. We talked to Heath Taylor. He'll give us a little bit more insight on that decision as well, Jose. And how about a political pants? He won his first champion of champions from post number six. Uh, the following year, he wins it again from post number six. Mm -hmm. This time, post number six was wide open right there. Mm -hmm. And uh, why not, right? Six has been good to me. I'll take yes. post number six, Monty Arosa says. And we had a chance to talk to Monty as well. And uh, about that, just what he was thinking as that post was still available. And he was just moving closer and closer to having a chance to select that post. So, All uh, right. So why don't we run the videos, Professor? And we'll, we'll go in order, right? We'll start with Bomb Cyclone, Christopher yeah. Riddell. Then we'll go to Amante Rosa, and then uh, he tell her when the outside. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, just a little note there. Uh, Impreso was the one that had the number one choice in the yes. championship. So he had the whole board. But uh, like you mentioned, we'll go ahead and start with Bomb Cyclone. 
So by the time that uh, Bomb Cyclone got to choose, Impression had gone. Uh, mm -hmm. He took number 10. Sweet Dash of Fire also went, uh, taking post number nine. And Patty Saint went third, taking post number eight. And now here comes Bomb Cyclone. Here's Chris O'Dell talking uh, about Bomb Cyclone. And also another horse that he's got in, uh, in this one, a very significant horse, powerful favorite, making his last start here at uh, in his career. And, of course, here at Los Alamitos, uh, he'll start from post number five. So here's Chris O'Dell. I didn't know if they would leave it for me. We had fourth pick. I didn't know if we would get to go there or not, but we had no choice once it was open. That's where he's done his damage. So it was, it was an e easy pick with it still there. We, we had to go there. He, loved, he loves it there. A lot of people think he just, the one hole's the only place he can run from, but I'll, I'll tell you this right now. He'll run from anywhere we load him up. He's a good horse. You train some outstanding horses over your career. You've had some outstanding runners in the Champion of Champions. Catch me in your dreams. Ran second in this race. Uh, powerful favorites. A veteran in this race. Ran third a couple of years ago. Where does Bomb Cyclone rank among all those great horses that you'd saddle? I've had some really super good horses, and at Catch Me in Your Dreams was my one of, of course, one of my favorites. I mean, he kind of put me on the map, and what a great horse he was. And he showed up every time I let him up there. And longevity was there. He was still running when he was eight years old. One of the fastest ones I ever ran was Terrific Energy, who never got in the Champion of Champions. But uh, what a super fast horse that was. And uh, Eddie Garcia always told me that, I mean, he rode her a lot. And he told me that she was one of the fastest ones he ever rode. You know, and those are old jockey stories, but still, there's, there's something there. But no doubt in my mind of all the horses I've had, Special Phoebe, Dean's Miracle, I could name them a bunch of them off, um, Catch Me and so forth. Bomb Cyclone is no doubt the fastest horse I've ever had. You're listening. You're listing so many great horses, so that's an incredible, incredible accolade that you're giving uh, the outstanding Bomb Cyclone. You also have a, a bittersweet story because Powerful Favorite gets into the Champion of Champions for the third time, but uh, we this will be his last last race, his uh, final race of his career, the swan song, with a great powerful favor. Yes, what a super horse, I mean, and he's, I think, made a million, two or three, and uh, he's just he's just done everything we've asked him to do, and he's been kind of like, catch me in your dreams, he's kind of made it the hard way, you know, he's won a lot of little derbies and things like that, but he, when he breaks, his heart gets big, and he's, he's tough to outrun, and we were so proud of him, went on the jockey the Gold Cup at Riodoso, and then he came here and, and won his trial to the Champion of Champions, and and did it convincingly. And uh, I'm so proud that he's get, gets to go out at the top. And uh, uh, if if somebody bobbles a little bit, I mean, he's for real. Yeah. He's for real. And I, I can hear in your voice how special this horse is. I mean, yeah, he, people don't realize how much uh, time trainer like especially someone like yourself who's here early in the morning puts with puts next to a horse so there, there's something special right oh um, there's 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 no doubt uh, that whole family has been super good and uh, bomb and uh, powerful favorite are right next to my heart and uh, cyber attacks he's working his way in there too he's a super fast horse cyber deserves to to win the two million and his brothers deserve to do good in the champion champions. Probably I toyed for about 20, 30 minutes, maybe to pick the nine or 10. Sometimes, you know, there's a little bit of risk to the far outside. Every once in a while, horses will have a tendency to possibly drift uh, or get a little bit separated from the field. However, you know, the horse he'd already ran here once in the 10 hole and the uh, vessels matured, and he handled it, you know, very, very, very professional. Got a, a seasoned race horse, got a veteran rider. Uh, just seemed like a logical thing after thinking about it a little bit and watching the replays of his past races when he was on the far outside that that, that was a place to go. I thought about the nine for a little bit um, just simply because sometimes I don't like the far outside. However, uh, you know, I was telling the owner too, it's kind of like in the bull ride. No one ever remembers a, a taking a safe pick in an 85 point bull ride. They remember who rides 95 and wins. So uh, I, I thought the risk to reward was worth it, and we'll see. It's a tough, tough field, but uh, I thought the best place to put him there and just let him run his race and see what happens. Bob Cyclone selects the inside rail, the rail. 
uh, that kind of opened up an extra spot towards the uh, outside part of the, uh, the field area with a political candy V. You're going to be also kind of sitting outside. You know, that horse, he ran some huge, huge races, and that's right where he drew when he ran those huge races, 6'7", six, 6'7", seven, six, seven, in Riddosa, and uh, I think that really helps him quite a bit. He doesn't like the far outside. He wouldn't have been a horse that I would have been able to put on the outside for whatever reason, especially here. He really drifts to the outside, and uh, super talented horse, can't be training any better, just sitting on the race of a lifetime, but obviously he's got a lifetime of uh, task in front of him as far as the competition, but I really think if that horse would just leave together with the horses instead of two or three links behind him, he would make a very good account of himself. My heart really started racing about 11.30 when I got the text about the uh, where we were able to pick. And so I was trying to do some strategizing and um, trying to guess where other guys would go and had a good feeling that, you know, six, seven, five, six, seven might be open. And definitely we've had a lot of success out of the six. Um, he's won it twice. We're going for three in a row. He's had the six hole twice. I'm pretty superstitious, and so it felt good um, to, to to get that spot. You know, hopefully it works out. This group, to, to uh, if you get it done, you tie refrigerator. You're beating this group. Would this be the sweet sweetest champion of champions win? I mean, you've had two oh, incredible ones. No doubt about it. I mean, this is a phenomenal group of horses. This is. These are the kind of horses that you want to run with. This is what the champion of champions is, should be. Um, you know, this is what we get up at three o'clock every day for in the morning, you know, is to run against and run with these kind of horses. And, you know, I'm just trying to I convince myself that the hard part's done. We're here, we're in it. And just to enjoy this and enjoy the, the moment, enjoy the time, um, love our horse. And, you know, it's just, it's going to be a fun race. Hope we have some luck in there. We'll definitely enjoy the night, both on Champion of Champions Night and the 2 million. Thanks yeah. so much. Thank you. Well, Orlando, thank you for getting those insights there, uh, sound bites after the draw. And uh, first of all, the emotion for Christopher Dell is there for, you know, a lot of the horses, the siblings he's trained. Uh, and, you know, it's hard to let go of horses like Powerful Favorite when they've done so much. Uh, but you got to think, uh, overall, if you were talking to Monty, you were talking to E. Taylor, you were talking to Christopher Dell. I think they drew where they wanted, right? I think this is this is game time. I think in the end of the day, after the draw, they said, you know what? I like we got what we wanted. They got what they wanted, Jose, but there's a pig monster of a horse <laughs> from number yes. post position number two. Yes. Danger. Perhaps mm -hmm. the greatest 440 horse. Uh of all time, certainly in, in uh, many, yeah. many years. Yes. Jose, he's won 14 stakes races, mm -hmm. every single one of those stakes races at 440 yards. He's won nine grade one races, every single one of those at 440 yards. He's the reigning world champion. He's the one they have to beat. It's his first time out here at Los Alamitos. So uh, that's one thing that the other horses have the experience of having raced here at Los Al. But like you mentioned, our uh, powerful favorite will be from post five. He's done well there. Impress on post 10. That's the spot they want. Political pants. You can't argue with the fact that he's won two champion of champions from that spot. And the one, uh, Bomb Cyclone, he's won uh, the two million, the Super Derby, uh, now facing the, the big time uh, older horses. And uh, like Heath Taylor said, a political candy V. Wins at 440 yards the All-American Derby. Is he sitting on a race of a lifetime? He's saying he's going against the field of a lifetime here at Los Al. And uh, we're not even mentioning some of these other outstanding runners uh, that have proven to be, you know, just iron tough. Cattail Cove. Uh, mm -hmm. Patty Saint has been really good. Sweet Dash of Fire, a young filly. You see what she does. Just a political girl. Uh, just a tremendous group of runners. Um the best, the best race that we've seen in a very, very long time. Uh, Ed Berger calls it the uh, the greatest champion of champions that he can recall, and uh, it, and it, you you gotta you gotta like the fact that they're gonna be running from a spot that gives them a good chance. We'll see. There's no excuses at that point, right? We'll see. Yes. Uh, who's got their best A game uh, on this huge night? And not only that, there's no room for errors against this quality of a field professor. There's there's absolutely no room for errors. You make a mistake, not only do you have one, two, three, you have four, five, six other runners that are in top, top, 
tip top shape that they're going to take advantage if you make a mistake out of the gate. So a terrific field assembled there for the renewal of the Grade One Champion Champions 50th edition this season and a purse of seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Having said all that, Professor, our selections are submitted in the nine lines already. They're sent to the printing as we speak, Professor. So I'm going to ask you, who did you send out as your top pick for the Champion of Champions? You're not going to like me. You're not going to like me when I say <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, no. Here we go. I, I picked Bomb Cyclone. And the reason you're not going to like me is I picked Bomb Cyclone to win. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Impress him to run second. Okay. And then Political Pens as my third selection. See? We, we, we landed on the same I order, Professor. How did... We just put, do you know, we just put danger in the winner's circle? We just put danger. Yeah. We just put danger in the winner's circle. We just put danger in the winner's circle, Professor. That's one way to look at it. Yes, that is one way to do it. But look, the more I looked at the race, Professor, the more I was like, you know what? If you were to tell me that Bomb Socken was going to get the rail, I had to go with him. Like, the more I thought about the race, the more I was like, where am I going to see the best race from Bomb Cyclone, or where is a higher possibility that I'm going to see his best effort? I would probably say the rail. He drew the rail. I had to pick him on top. Now, same here. You know, last yeah. week when we were talking with George Duarte, you know, we were just saying there's a really good chance he's going to get the rail, and that's probably going to make him, uh, you know, a top, top contender. He's 3-1 to one on the morning line at Burgar's morning line. And yeah. – uh, uh, Pence, having raced from uh, post number six and has success from there, he's the favorite, right? Two to one. Yeah, two to Preston one. from the outside post, five to two, second choice. And then you got Danger and uh, and Bomb Cyclone at three to one. So yeah. uh, very contentious at the top right there. And then you're getting some nice prices from the other six horses uh, involved. So, and I'm talk, talking to Gary Brinson, the starter. He's the one that's going to have that button that's going to get send them on their way. I, I, I kind of ran into him uh, on Wednesday, and we okay. were talking about what a great group, and he made the comment, you know what? All of these horses, horses are good in the gate. They all behave yeah. well in the gate. They're very professional. So that's another uh, great thing that hopefully they all go in there cleanly. They all set properly. They're all in spots that they, they have had success in the past. The gate opens, and all that's left is about 21 seconds of just sheer thrills, Jose. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be fun. Can't wait. And I'm just, I'm looking at the PPS here. Actually, I'll bring them up so you can see. Uh, I found something something uh, something interesting here. Look at the comment on Bomb Cycle last time out in his race in the Super Derby. George Duarte, our char caller, we had him. He said, "Never in danger," and he spelled "danger" like "danger the horse." Is that a little play on words from George? You saw that? Uh, oh, 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 typo. No, yes, no, no. of course no. it was. Of course yes. it was. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Never in danger. Right next to it, right? Yes. Next to uh, bomb cyclone is danger, and uh, we know danger is very quick out of the gate. So is bomb cyclone. Uh, halfway through that race, at about 220 yards into it, that's going to be very, very interesting because, like we were just saying, danger, just a uh, stone cold horse at 440 yards. Uh, the young stud bomb cyclone. Uh, let's see what he does uh, going against looking eye to eye with danger. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. That'll be on Saturday night, the feature event on Saturday night. And just as we were speaking, Professor, uh, we just have the entries for Sunday night. Uh, so now we have the official PPs for the Little South Community Futurity card on Sunday night. Uh, you were able to get us some sound bites as well for the for the draw of the of the two million futurity and here it is 400 yards 1.8 million dollars uh this is how they the connection shows their post positions aj bone running good wagon sa ray j who you liked a lot on trials night required first who uh, made a mistake of drifting in inwards but that one has a lot of gate speed there's jericho we know he could finish with the best of them uh he drew gate number five He's John Gingeri, the winner of the All American Futurity in post six. Hey Shaker, the, the claimer out of the Los Angeles County Futurity, has now made it uh, to two million dollar Futurity finals. And then we got uh, Mahone's Magic, Cyber Attack, Christopher O'Dell, and Famous Miss Kitty. That is the field for the two million Futurity. Yeah, and the, with the number one selection uh, during the post position selection show, Cyber Attack. Uh, gets the uh, the first selection and he goes to post 
position number nine. Uh, hey, Shaker, uh, the claimer, the former claimer, uh, selects post position number seven. He's judge and jury, was sitting there uh, waiting and uh, gets post position number six. That left the outside post to uh, famous Miss Kitty, uh, runner that's very interesting as far as how, how strong uh, she's had some races here at Los Al. And we talked about Jaime Gomez, right? He yes. won the Los Al 2 million with Jay Fire Up. Mm -hmm. He goes with AJ Bourne running, and he's going to put her on the rail, Jose. Not afraid yeah. of that post position number one. I have a feeling that Jaime actually really relishes uh, having those uh, you know, fast runners go from post position number one. Uh, Mahomes Magic gets one of the outside posts, the eight. Jericho with the five. And uh, uh, Heath Taylor, he's very analytical. Uh, he thinks about things. Uh, a lot as far as like, okay, what's what no, what do the numbers say? It yep. goes with post position number five, require first, uh, then gets the four. Good, what I'm gonna say the two, and Ray Ye completes the field there. So, we had a chance to talk to uh, Chris Odell about cyber attack and also a special story about Ray Ye and uh, who this horse is named after a, a special horseman, um, the late Ray Ye, who was a trainer. Uh, so he talks a little bit about uh, that as well. So let's talk, let's uh, hear about Cyber Attack, Ray Ye, and then we'll follow with the Heath Taylor interview. He talks about he's judge and jury. I think he was a, an all American type horse. You know, he ran really good in the uh, Rainbow Fraternity. He had the fastest time. And and then we drew, I think, the four hole or five hole, something like that at Rio Doso. And he broke and kind of stumbled a little bit and grabbed a quarter real bad, which means he jerked off a big chunk of his foot. And it was squirting blood when he came back after the race. He was limping very bad after the race. And we got him to the test barn and we had to wrap it two or three times just to try to stop the bleeding. And then the next day we went to work on it, making him a special shoe and carterizing it and all kinds of different things. I had a whole crew there of horseshoers and veterinarians and surgeon and all that kind of stuff. And we fixed him up. We had to pass on the All-American and, and came here and he he did very well in the Golden State, like you said, and uh, had the fastest time and then ran second by just a, a dot. Uh, we made like a little adjustment to him. I put some smaller blinkers on him so he can see a little bit. You just have to try to make those adjustments, and that's my job. And So we ran him in the trials for the two million with a little bit smaller blinkers, and he never saw anybody because um, he was so far in front. But uh, I'm thinking that when it gets down to the nitty gritty is my plan that if he has to hook up and he can really see that other horse will maybe he'll try a little harder I hope just an inch harder <laughs> yeah. so uh, let's we're gonna hope for the best and you also have a horse by the name of Ray Ye and uh, named after a special person if you could share a little bit about sure. the, the person behind the name uh, Ray Ye was purchased at Rio Doso for I think 310,000 uh, we really liked the, the colt from the beginning. He just hasn't figured out how to run from point A to point B like we want him to. And last uh, set of trials for the two million, he did. Um, he's named after a late trainer named Ray A. And uh, uh, he was very influential in the business years ago. Uh, very good trainer. And, and uh, I think one of his best friends was Bob Baffert, as a matter of fact. And... Uh, uh, he's deceased, and uh, Mrs. Ye's coming to the race on uh, Sunday. She's flying in and coming to watch her namesake horse run. She's very excited. Uh, Sean Hubbard, the owner of Ray Ye at this point, is paying for her flight to come and everything, and we thought it was a, a really good deal to have her on board. And uh, it's pretty, it doesn't happen every day that somebody named after a family member yeah. or something like that you know, is in a big race like this. We, we see it sometimes in the thoroughbred world, but not so much in the quarter horse world. But, I mean, this horse is a contender. He has the second fastest time. So uh, we've got some angels riding along with that one, along with, with Cyber because of Bob Rosenthal. Of course. Yeah, that, and that always takes it to, a, to the next level. When Correct. You start looking back at all the special people that kind of got you, get you to this point. Exactly, it did. It, it doesn't take a village. It, it takes a whole city. 
I looked at the statistics from an analytical uh, view of the year long at Los Alamitos races, and you know, I, that, that's, every race is different, but the six, eight, and 10 had the highest winning percentages here. He had won out of the six before. Um, he kind of likes a target and a, and a horse uh, that's really, really fast beside him. Um, I know, obviously, the entire field is, is very talented, but he likes a strong target, and so uh, I knew that the five was staying open, and I had the other horse, Jericho, who I actually think is incredibly fast and talented. He just needs a clean start. Just you just like I say, you got to take your best shot trying to win these races. I mean, it's good to play, so it's good to run second, third, and fourth, but that's not what you bring him over here for. So I wanted him close to that horse, so uh, regardless of, of how they all leave, that I wanted him close to the speed of the race. And you had mentioned, you had shared with us that uh, you were considering Maybe taking off the flipping halter for uh, Jericho. Uh, Jose Nicasio is going to get them out on him. Uh, is it, has that decision been made? You know, I'm going to think about it tonight, watch a little bit more replays. I think uh, by the rules of Los Alamitos, have to 9 in the morning. Um, I wanted to wait and see how the horse drew. And of course, now we just found out. Um, so I'm going to think about it a little bit more and see, see how many of the horses actually in the field entered with a flipping halter, possibly how long it'll be in there or not be in there, and then make a decision by morning. There it is, a little bit of the sound bites uh, following the draw for the two minute free trader, Professor. What was uh, your main takeaway there? Uh, main takeaway is uh, top heavy. You know, you have some uh, really big time horses uh, like Cyber Attack and he's judging jewelry and Jericho. Uh, then from there, it's pretty much an even, even plane on yeah. the other horses, I think. And uh, it'll be interesting to see which one of the maybe, you know, just the one below the top three is going to have that huge race, the, the, the big step forward. Will it be Ray? Will Ray do it again uh, yeah. after kind of showing what he did on the uh, night of the trials? Uh, $310,000, they must have liked him a lot, right? So can he, uh, can he just continue to develop now third out here at Los Al? He's had two really nice races, had that nice victory. Can he now uh, just blow him away, you know, or something like that? Uh, can he, can he uh, he's judge and jury repeat what he did in the All-American Futurity. Mm -hmm. uh, Rodrigo Segala Vallejo gets the mound now on this runner. And uh, can he repeat uh, what he did? And if he does, not too many horses have won the All-American Futurity and the 2 million Futurity, Jose. So uh, that'll be something to, uh, to watch. What if, let's say, if what if Require First keeps a straight path this time around and doesn't log in and doesn't let Jericho catch him? Are we talking about a possible upset? We know he can break fast. What if this time around they say, you know what? Straight as a string, you know, something else might happen. You know, we might be talking about a different result. That's another horse that could be in the mix of things. I mean, we've seen it a lot in the two million. Uh, Cartel just rocking, for example. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll do old Cartel Cove to win that one. Uh, yep. He looks hot, defeated. Yeah. He's a dash of fire. When fire. Dash of fire was looking to sweep it all. Uh, yeah. A horse by him will value the man. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll do a higher fire. When she was trying to uh, sweep it all, a political jazz did not win the two million when he, nope. was, when he was in that race. Uh, you, you know, it happens on these, on these two-year-olds. Uh, we've talked about how professional the older horses are. Every once mm -hmm. in a while, uh, the two-year-old, a big, big two-year-old star, uh, just takes that little bobble and some other horse that just continue, is getting a little bit better and better and better, just has that huge race uh, when the big money is on the line. A uh, good wagon, I say. Uh, that horse has put together some really nice nice efforts as well. Um, and he's got Jesus Rio Sayala up, you know, a, a very cool and collected uh, rider. But like you mentioned, required first is another one. The last Mogaska, what a win that would be for a Rasmus yes. boy uh -huh. to uh, take required first to the finish line. Uh, we got Hay Shaker uh, with a veteran rider and Oscar Peinado and another claimer, Mahomes Magic. Uh, so a lot of interesting uh, storylines uh, that we can maybe look forward to. I wouldn't be shocked if one of those uh, horses that we're talking about just surprises and maybe hits the board. That's the field for the two minute futurity at Los Amigos. That'll be Sunday night, the featured event on that eight race program what a weekend we have in store here at los Lomitos. please come visit us if you are in the area uh it's going to be a must watch racing this uh, this week there but obviously professor we've been we've been salivating over this champion of champions 
we're just hours away from this tremendous field. We are, Jose. Uh, the, the week is here. The hours are countdown is happening as we speak. And uh, now we're just, uh, you know, they were so away from uh, a race for the ages, the uh, 50th running of the Champion of Champions. And a reminder to the VM public, uh, Ed Burgard will be on set alongside yours truly, uh, Caleb Keller and Dave Weaver. It will be uh, us four working the, the FanDuel broadcast. It'll be, uh, it'll be great to share the, the desk with Ed and be able to talk to uh, racing all night long with him. Yeah, he'll be here uh, just, I'm sure, sharing some memories of past Champion of Champions. And of course, just a wealth of knowledge. Uh, after putting that morning line together, that I know it took him a long time to kind of mm -hmm. finally come together on both morning lines. Uh, sure, he'll be uh, uh, looking at the tour board, seeing how the numbers are moving. And, and again, you know, he very few people can watch a race, analyze the trouble, and come up with winners like Ed Berger. Yeah, so it's going to be fun to pick his brain throughout the night and have him on set. Uh, as an analyst there on Champion of Champions Night. Professor, thank you so much for, for the sound bites. Uh, great job as always. It was fun to catch up with uh, what some of these connections had said and what they, you know, their thought process about uh, choosing their post positions and where they drawn. And now it's go time. It's time to uh, put the horses in the gate and hopefully everybody gets a clean, fair trip and uh, made the best horse win. Double header time. Join us during the daytime. 12.30 mm -hmm. p.m. first post on Saturday uh, with the starlet. And on Saturday night, 6 p.m. first post uh, with the champion of champions. And, of course, our thoroughbred meet gets going on Friday. Jose, daddy, for the third yes. time. Yes. To go see the, uh, Abraham. Jose, AJ? Are we calling him yeah, AJ? AJ? Yep, AJ. Right. He's, I can hear him. I think I can hear him. I, I, think, he, I, I, think, I think he's calling me already. Uh, but he's doing great. Mama's doing great as well. So thank you for, for your messages, Professor. Thank you for the entire Los Alamitos family. I got a lot of messages there from, from uh, fellow uh, uh, compadres and, and co-workers. So thank you to the Los Alamitos family. Mama and baby are doing well. Uh, it won't be long before I start bringing him out to Los Alamitos. That's right. That's right. He, can, he couldn't wait to watch the champion. Of <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. He made his arrival. He said, I got to be there for this big weekend. So a big salute to everybody. Come join us at Los Alamitos. It's going to be a great weekend of racing. Professor, have a good night, and I'll see you out there this weekend. You too, Jose. Have a great night. And the way they go. This December, Quarter Horse Racing's most prestigious race will have one of the greatest fields ever, the 50th running of the Champion of Champions. A race for the ages. World champion danger. Two-time champion of champions winner, Apolitical Pence. Champion Impressive. Full Brothers Bomb Cyclone and Powerful Favorite. Plus five other stars, all in one race. Who will be the champion of champions? The Southern California Thoroughbred Racing Circuit returns to Los Alamitos this December with our winter thoroughbred meet. Opening day is set for Friday, December 9th. Young stars will be in action with four stakes races for juveniles highlighting the meet. The grade one starlet for fillies is set for Saturday, December 10th. The Los Alamitos Futurity will be held on Saturday, December 17th. And don't miss our NHC qualifier. Opening day is Friday, December 9th. For more, visit LosAlamitos.com. The best of nighttime racing continues at Los Alamitos with the Southern California Derby on Sunday, December 18th. Top qualifiers, Stuck in Probate leads the way, plus Dasha Dynasty, Boone Darbian, Conant Valley, and six others. And after Christmas break, Los Alamitos is back on Saturday, December 31st. Ring in the new year with a special holiday weekend of racing, Saturday, December 31st, Sunday, January 1st. And remember the Southern California Derby, the best of quarter horse racing, always at Los Alamitos.